everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Lisa Brazelton. I'm here with Chris Noble. We are with Wisdom from the Edge, and we are all about how to master your mental well being. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of uh, Wisdom from the Edge. I am your co host, Chris Noble, along here with Lisa Brazelton, and today we have some really exciting things to talk about. And uh, Lisa, w- as before we started recording, we were adjusting mics and uh, you know getting everything set up for you beautiful people to make sure this is the best of the best type of podcast you're getting. And in doing so, setting up uh, some, uh, let's say, some uh, leverage systems to position the mic, you came across some books. And of course, nothing is a coincidence in this reality. And these books... Uh, we're giving you some some inspiration for today's episode. So how did that all? Uh, <laughs> I just like how it started with you seeing a book and then the ideas have unfolded since then. Yes, I have my my Yeti right next to me. And I needed to stack the Yeti with a number of books. And so I came across the telomere effects, which I think is going to be our next episode. And then I also found... Um, the surrender experiment by michael singer and he is the author of the untethered soul an absolutely phenomenal book that came out i would say probably in the early 2000s and um and i i think having this conversation about how do we encapsulate the value of receiving love. Like what is, how do we value the receiving of love and what does it look like and how can we harness it and how can we keep it? Right. Because I think we all have these moments where like, okay, I feel really good. Or again, we can have this quick conversation of the difference between happiness and joy, um, which we, may get into just a little bit, but Chris, from your recent experience that you shared with me, you are on this amazing high in this place where you have planted the seeds of self-love for the last several years and you are in full bloom. And I would love for you to share that with the audience. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. It's it's yeah, it's been a journey, of course, and it's always a journey in life. But I feel like I'm I've reached a um, a stage in that journey that feels um, really profound and really grounded and rooted. And what I mean by that is that it feels like it's here to stay. It does not. I feel like I'm not going to be going backwards from this. I'm just going to be continuing to move forward from it. And my you know my self love journey started in my mid twenties when I was moving through some extremely challenging um, periods of depression, and I was in therapy and. My therapist at the time asked that uh, one of those just those perfect questions that a, a good therapist will ask. And he said to me, well, Chris, you know, this inner this inner dialogue you have going on within you, what if you switch that around to you talking to your best friend or a loved one who you care the most about? In other words, when I'm interacting with myself and when I'm relating to myself, am I doing it as, as if I'm my own best friend or am I doing it as if I'm my own worst enemy? And I think at that time I was definitely doing it as I am my own worst enemy. And it, my self-talk was horrendous. It was um, extraordinarily abusive. If, if, because once again, my therapist was great at switching the perspective he's like would you speak this way the way you speak to yourself now would you speak that way to anyone that you care about and the the immediate answer was no i wouldn't go to my niece and be like you effing idiot what's wrong with you (laughs) you know i wouldn't go to my grandmother and just be like that was the stupidest thing i've ever heard what's like how could you possibly get that wrong you're terrible or like but this is the inner dialogue that i was having for myself for anything whether it was being late for uh, a work opportunity or um, just missing something, uh, you know, in a social context, it doesn't matter in a relationship, whatever the situation, the inner dialogue was atrocious. It was abusive. 
not a good situation. So I knew something had to shift. And when he, my therapist asked that question, like, how, could you treat yourself as your own best friend? Could you treat yourself as your grandmother, as your niece, as your nephew, as the person that you would have the most respect and love for? Why can't you do that for yourself? And I swear that question and that journey has taken me since I was about 25 at the time and I'm 34 now. So that's almost, you know, just under 10 years. Like that's about nine, that's a nine year journey right there. Does it have to take that long? No, of course not. But that's been my personal journey with it. And just last week, I I was in a form of meditation and was doing a couple of exercises that um, were profoundly centered around my own self-love and just kind of taking it to a new level. And after these um, sort of meditations, in a sense, that I was doing with within myself, I came out of them with this sense of we all kind of have experienced profound moments of love for ourselves, even when we're moving through very challenging times with our relationship with ourselves. And I've had lots of those in those nine years, but they don't really last. They they maybe last like a day, a week, maybe a month if I'm really fortunate. But then it just like goes back and then, you know, uh, and the cycle continues and evolves, but also continues. And this time around, I truly do feel like a, a, a major shift has happened where I don't feel like I'm going back. And one of the main feelings that has come out of this is that I don't just have love for myself. It's going to sound weird, but I'm <laughs> I'm in love with myself. Uh, I have come to a new place of understanding and and um, compassion and and unconditional love for myself in the way that it is. I was sharing with um, our self mastery group that uh, Lisa and myself um, are part, well, host and participate in. And I was sharing this morning in that call that it feels like I'm in a relationship. Like I actually wake up now feeling the excitement of a new relationship, feeling that, and it is, it's exactly the same emotion as when you're in love with another person. Um, that's what I'm experiencing is this is it's this intimate romantic almost love towards somebody else but there's nobody else in the room it's just me and I'm feeling it towards myself and that feeling is is quite intoxicating because it feels so true and it feels so like if anything it feels that's that that is in a way our default mode and we just from birth get taken away from this default of of pure love towards of course all others but in order to love everything else, it really has to start within. If it doesn't start from within, then it it can't last on the external. Like we can still love a lot on the external, but it's 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 a way of kind of fleeting. It doesn't it doesn't have that sustainability. But when it's coming, when you can do it internally first, I feel like that's the way it can become sustainable outwardly. Um, and so anyway, it's it's a really interesting and honestly quite bizarre place to be in. Where I don't know if I've actually experienced this type of self love to this degree ever, maybe, or if I have, it was the lo- the 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 last time it was like this was childhood, before it was taught out of me. So um, yeah, I weirdly feel like now when I wake up that I'm in a, a committed relationship, and then I remind myself that that's actually just me. <laughs> well, all relationships start all relationships start with ourselves. Every, every gift that we can give another person has, I think it's a requirement to be able to give it to ourselves first in order to embody and view it into others. But Chris, we're not taught these things, right? I mean, on some level, oftentimes we're, we're taught the opposite where we need to love others before we love ourselves. And it's very selfish, Exactly. You know, if there is this, you know, talk of self love, and and I can tell you, listener, you know this too, because you are here listening to us. That's not the truth anymore. That is an old illusion, an old paradigm, and we are moving out of it. The one thing that I want to ask you and say also is that science has discovered that when we do this work 
And a lot of times it is in that quieting the mind, going into some level of meditation where you're, you are able to bring in the, whatever if there's self affirmations, whether it is just connecting with your higher self, but there is something that clicks. It's a click. And that click changes the constellation. It's as if there are new chemicals that are being pumped into our body, which on a scientific level, physiologically, we are changing and we are expanding. And those chemicals are, and I know that there are words for these chemicals. Um, I've heard them, but I can't regurgitate them at this moment. But what it does is it births forth an energy, a light, an illumination within our heart space. And that's how we can embody this light within us and people can see us as they're walking down the street and they're attracted to our energy. They're attracted to a light because we are almost illuminating bodies through a chemical reaction within our within ourselves, within our physical form that's come out of the love that we have for ourselves. It's incredible. Can you talk about this a little bit about how you feel like on the inside? Yeah, it, it actually relates to a bit of what we went over last episode, which was the chemical reaction of our, our cells and how when our cells receive a specific emotion, it kind of gets reinforced, basically. And that's what I'm feeling happening now on the, uh, the I guess the other side is this reinforcement of the self-love frequency and the feeling of it in one sense the feeling of it is um deep uh, a sense of deep security a sense of deep safety and what i mean by that is i truly feel like i have my own back and i think for myself personally my journey with self-love and working through my depression in my 20s I did not have my back for a long, 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 long time. So that is a huge shift for me personally. That might not be the case for everyone, of course, listening and watching to this. But for me, I, most of my life, I haven't had my back. I, I've I've been the first to throw myself under the bus um, in any in most situations. So that was a huge shift all of a sudden where I actually feel like I can trust myself. And it sounds kind of nuts sometimes saying these things out loud. But that's the feeling for me is that there's a deep sense now of, of self-trust that, I don't know, we don't take the time to examine. Like, do you trust yourself? Well, of course I trust myself. Sure, I trust myself. But that would be my answer previously. But now feeling where I'm, what I'm feeling now, I don't think I did fully trust myself. Uh, in a lot of ways. So just, I mean, think about being in a relationship with another person, let's say in a romantic setting, what's one of the most important things in any relationship? It's trust business wise too. any relationship. It trust is so important. So if you don't have that trust within yourself, once again, as above, so below, as within, so without whatever, it's all ref our out, out external is, is created by the internal. So for me, a big a big shift in that feeling, what that feels like is a sense of trust, is a sense of safety, uh, on top of the fact that it's also a sense of just giddy excitement. Um, in a way of, if you've ever played a game where it's been a pretty challenging game, but there's a part of you that you're like, I want to master this game, though, like, it's a really cool game. I, I'm kind of crap at it right now, but I feel if I just put in a bit more time, I'll, I'll really get to a point where I can really start to enjoy it and, and get into the game. And that's what I feel like is happening right now. The sense of excitement and feeling it's not because I have any idea what my future holds. I actually have, if anything, I know the least now of what even is going to happen within my day to day life, let alone my future. And that's fine. That's actually kind of exciting. Um, it's also just this sense of now knowing how to nav having a better sense of of navigating this 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 physical reality it makes this game this holographic virtual reality beautiful beautiful simulated reality that we're in a lot more fun 
a lot more less uh, coming at it from a victim mentality and more from an experience or, uh, you know, mentality, because experience is all of the things experience is the bad and the good, the light and the dark and everything else in between. So you can still move through. It's not like life doesn't challenge me anymore. It's not like challenging things don't happen to me anymore because they absolutely do and have recently. And yet it's just the way I'm navigating this reality has shifted into still a sense of, of, of play. Now I feel like there's like a feeling of play and, and still fun because I'm truly enjoying the ambiguity of life now. And I'm, I'm enjoying not knowing because it's like a page turner, like what awesome book or movie, you know, when you just, I don't know what's going to happen next, but man, get like what the scene, the next scene is going to be incredible. Like what, what's going to happen here? What's going to go like, who am I going to meet now? And and what's going to happen this next hour, this next minute. Um, And of course, at the end of it all saying, staying deeply rooted in the present and not getting too caught up in all those future or past things. Cause that's been another key to this is, is deeply rooted presence. Um, really, really has been a big thing. And we can maybe get into that later, but the feeling overall, I would say is a sense of trust and, and deep safety. I think that's beautiful. So I was, I was going to recap because it sounds to me as if trust being present and surrendering are these key ingredients for being able to experience this longer lasting state of joy. And in um, in an earlier conversation with our group of the self mastery program, we were, were having a conversation of discerning what happiness and deep joy are. And I would describe happiness as moments and the deep joy are longer lasting feelings that actually are embedded within our cellular bodies, within our cell, within our cells, that joy continues and grows and evolves. And happiness is one of those ways in which you can bring about and deepen your sense of joy. And so I find, you know, this trust is also so important. And we talked about this on the last episode is how do we trust our intuition? And I think what I'm hearing, Chris, is that the trust is coming because you know you've got your own back. Whatever come may, you know, whatever come may be, you know you're going to be okay. And you are in a safe space because you're connected with your higher self. You believe in yourself. You literally, it's, and I can see it in you as well, that there is this luminosity that's coming out of you that wasn't quite there. It's there, but it wasn't quite there. And it's like falling in love. How many people lack sleep when they first go through their honeymoon phase of falling in love? You could you can function very well on two or three hours of sleep because you're just blissed out. Well, there's all of these things that happen within our, our bodies on a chemical level. And the endorphins that rush through, what I'm experiencing through you is the excitement of those endorphins coming in by your choice, and this is a choice, of truly committed to what it feels like to love you, to love yourself. Yeah, I love that, Lisa, because right now, what's one of the biggest reasons why it's so exciting is because it isn't coming from anything external which means it is infinite which it's 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 not finite because in the external even if you're looking into another person uh, your partner for example in a romantic uh, re- relationship if that person is the reason why you're experiencing that deep love and that's beautiful of course However, I've I've been in that position. And then when you're not with that person anymore, <laughs> if that indeed happens, or even if you're with them for the rest of your life, in a way, you're putting a lot of pressure on that person and on that relationship if if you're relying on them and the relationship to 
be the cause of your happiness or your deep joy or deep love. And that feeling of, again, especially when you first fall in love, it's all happening because of an external thing. Doesn't, I'm not saying that falling in love with someone isn't a beautiful thing. It's one of the most beautiful things we can experience in this life. But um, when it comes from internally, when it comes from this journey of self-love, it's uh, arguably for me, I am even, if not on par, more excited now than when I have been falling in love with you know, my girlfriend, Pat, previous partner, whoever. Um, and I've fallen in love multiple times in my life. And, you know, now when it's coming from within, it's almost more exciting because I know this is one here to last because it's it's me. As long, <laughs> so as long as I'm here, it's here. And also, it's it feels sustainable. And it feels like, if anything, just imagine what all those external experiences are now going to be like because of where i have what i've i've have now within myself of course that's going to be mirrored and if anything amplified in my external world and just in the last week since this uh breakthrough i i've been seeing that and i've been experiencing that in in just micro ways and wow talk about exciting right like now the power is within you to do this Right, right. And you made me think about how that amplifies the relationships that you are moving in the future to and your current relationships, how those relationships get impacted. But the fact that you feel a, such a huge sense of fulfillment just being alone with you and I know, and and um, and I'd love to hear from your own experience in the last several years, and those shifts that you've made in that soft self talk, talk from it being very judgmental into being very self loving. And I find myself too, oftentimes, if I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, you've got." you know, wrinkles here and you need to put more makeup on or man, you look really tired today. I will hear myself say those things. And immediately I will turn that and say, you're beautiful. You are wonderful. You, you're so kind. You deserve to have a great day. What do you need? You know, like enough of that. You don't need any of that. You're perfect just the way you are. And that talk does feel very foreign. It's, I mean, always feels foreign to me. It's not like I'm, you know, like, oh, I speak to myself like this all the time. But it is so necessary in order to turn the corner. And the work that Chris and I are so committed to always is when we provide the practices to you, listener, that we use ourselves. And these tools and techniques, they work. And they work because we're committed to them. And the journey and the beautiful revelations and the insights that come through when we turn that corner from quieting our minds and hearing the mind chatter that doesn't feel good to being committed and putting our attention on our intention to shift those to loving thoughts within such a quick period of time change happens and i think chris you had mentioned this before but yes maybe your journey has been over the last nine years my journey certainly has been that and longer, but there is a moment that shifts and you can't go back. You just can't go back. You now know too much. And if for some reason you're hearing negative self-talk, it's because you haven't done the practice. You haven't kept it up, right? 100%. It is a practice because think about how much programming we're working um, in a way against. And it's not to, uh, you know, um, 
take away from our own power because we're infinitely powerful beings. However, you know, from day one in this society that we're living in, certainly in the Western world, but I would say most of the places around the world these days, we're 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 taught very specific ideals and a lot of those ideals are being reshaped right now because they don't work and and they're quite destructive uh self-destructive more more than anything and really it's it's a matter of um it's a matter of of reprogramming so one of the things that i like to do to reprogram my thoughts is is just repetition of uh, affirmations And one of the ones that that helps me is the most basic and most obvious, which is I love you. I love you directed to me, of course. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I say it three times each time I if I think to say it, I'm going to repeat it three times. Three is a magical number. um, And we could get into that. It's a whole other topic. But I do like repeating it three times. And I try to find as many moments throughout the day. But if I'm only going to do it once in that day, I try to do it first thing in the morning. So when I wake up. It's just an affirmation, uh, one of a couple of different affirmations I like to say to myself every morning. But the thing I also add in now with I love you, I love you, I love you, is I hug myself and I physically touch my body to reinforce on a more kinetic, physical level that love. And again, when I first started this, I was kind of faking it. I didn't really believe it all the time, especially on certain days. But you just kind of power through and just keep keep it going. It's it's more about the repetition and creating the habit. It, it's like you want to create a habit of loving yourself. And sometimes to to create that habit, it's it's really not going to feel perhaps authentic when you first go through it, especially if you're anything like me and you're working through some pretty intense self hatred. So you're not all the time. We're all capable of quantum leaps uh, and overnight shifts. Absolutely. But for me personally, it was like an eight to nine year process of reprogramming that self-talk. And one of the best ways for myself was just repetition and, and creating new habits. And those new habits were telling myself that I loved myself every morning at the very least, if not throughout the day when I could find moments, maybe after a workout, after my yoga session, while you're kind of lying down in Shavasana, I'd take another moment during that usually to then give myself another bit of self-love, pat the body, you know, physically reinforce that that thought. And once again, for quite a while, I, I, I didn't feel like I, I, I sensed any progress, didn't really see any progress. And it's really easy to just kind of, okay, that's not working. What else can I try? I would say when it comes to self-love, it's probably going to take you longer than you might want or imagine. And that's okay. And maybe it won't. I'm I'm just speaking from my personal experience and kind of get to a point where it's like, I'm just going to make this a habit and it's going to be a habit for the rest of my life. So I'm just going to kind of make it a habit and then not really think about it anymore. And then fast forward a year of doing this all of a sudden. And I guarantee when you look back from in that year, you're going to notice a pretty massive shift and just keep it going and just keep it going and create those habits where I mean, I want this to be a lifelong habit, this this act of self-love. Other affirmations kind of come and go, uh, depending on what I'm looking to bring in and manifest in my life. But if there's one affirmation that I know I can continue the rest of my life, it's that I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I think that's so beautiful. I think there's a lot of different ways in which we can um, instill self-love practices on ourselves. Uh, a personal story that I just had yesterday is um on wednesday was an absolutely insane day i didn't expect for it to be back-to-back meetings but literally from 7 a.m to about 6 p.m it was hardly any breaks and i was absolutely fatigued and exhausted not happy not feeling any level of self-love And yesterday I had a number of meetings scheduled and I woke up and I was fatigued and I thought, what do I need for me today? And I decided to cancel all of my meetings and I rescheduled them. And even though I still did some work, I had, I worked and I got caught up on things. I feel like a completely different person because 
that was another way of self-love act that I gave to myself by not pushing myself to a place where I'm exhausted. It was the surrender because I asked myself, Lisa, what do you need? And the only thing that I could hear is you need rest. You need to take a step back. You need, you know, to really recharge your battery a bit. This is not the way in which is wor- works well for me. And I think a lot of us are in a place in, in their life where life is going by fast and it is intense and it's filled with not only our responsibilities, but a lot of unpredictability. And there's a lot of negative talk out in the world and social media and our news and we're bombarded. But when we can actually self-reflect and listen to those small things, I mean, it was no big deal that I rescheduled those meetings yesterday. As a matter of fact, because I did, I had a couple people say, thank you. I actually really needed the time to do this, that, or the other, or I was really feeling like I was getting pushed or pressed to try to get this in. And so I gave a gift to myself, but I gave a gift to other people. And, um, you know, Chris, you talk a lot about going into and connecting with Mother Earth as an amazing way to ground and to be that um, that loving partner to yourself. And I know that there's some a little bit of science behind that as well. Can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. And I love what you said, Lisa. I just want to also like just really highlight that for the for the audience asking that question of what do i need right now what what does lisa need what does chris need what do you the listener the audience member what do you need right now um is such an important question because that think about it and again in a relationship if you want to show that compassion and affection for your partner you know, you, you'd be like, what can I get you? You know, what, what, what do you need, honey? Like, what, what can I get you right now? Um, you look tired. Do you need, do you, do you want me to go out and get you a coffee or something or what? Like, what, what do you, you look cold? Do you need a blanket? Can I put my jacket on? Like, what do you need? What do you need? And we think that, that, that's, that comes so effortless to most of us, I would say, when it's towards somebody that we love, you know, hey, grandma, you know, oh, oh don't worry. I'll get that for you, grandma. It's all good. What, what do you need right now? Like, why don't we ask that to ourselves? I know I certainly did not ask that question for most of my life. And now I am asking that question that you were saying, Lisa, which is what do I need right now? And just that question alone has made, oh my God, what a difference, right? Where you can get an answer sometimes, uh, especially when you do take just a moment to quiet the mind a bit and you get that answer, which is rest or I needed, I need chocolate i need (laughs) whatever i need i need a hug you know i need um i need to call my mom i need to uh go with my buddies this afternoon and just go to the beach and just not think about my work right now or whatever so i I really like that you brought that up because that also has been a massive game changer for me asking questions to ourselves Um, what do we need and then a lot of the time, the answer for me is I need nature. I need to go into, I need to to experience wonderful Gaia, Mother Nature, Terra, whatever name you want to call this planet we live on. I love, 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 love nature because so many things. One of one of the many reasons actually is um, it's the sounds of nature that I actually really, really appreciate. And what I learned recently is that um, for myself with my music, I, I write these, um, I write things called binaural beats and binaural beats are a wonderful, um, way to shift your state of consciousness. And you're doing that through a method of different frequencies that create a interference pattern through your brain and actually bring your brain into these different states of consciousness. Well, nature creates natural binaural beats when the wind moves through the trees and leaves. Um, there's this like, kind of sound that sometimes happens 
um, where the different frequencies and the sounds of nature uh, interfere and interact with each other. And they create these oscillations and these different vibrations and these different interference patterns, which create binaural beats, natural binaural beats. So just even the sounds of the birds, of the leaves, of the trees, of the of the water has such a calming uh, and, and consciousness shifting effect on ourselves that we don't have to do anything. I think for me, I love nature because it's I, I can be lazy. <laughs> I just all I have to do is go into nature and go to a park, take off my shoes sit and stand on or stand on the grass and one of the big benefits from that is our feet you know there's a reason they call uh the bottom of our feet the soul your souls the soles of your feet right um what a weird name to just what a weird word to put to the bottom of your feet you think there'd be a more scientific word that we use but we use the word soul there's no coincidence there um, our feet actually have uh, a very large number of receptors, uh, even more so than our actual hands. Our feet have, uh, I forget how many, I have to look into it again, but um, a, an amazing amount of receptors that receive these negative ions. And these negative ions come from the earth, come from the planet all the time, infinitely. And our feet are the best at, at absorbing them. Of course, our hands are great too you know, like any part of our body, but the feet are like by far the, the best absorbers of this energy of these negative ions. And this is all um, scientifically proven. Great website to check out for this is earthing.com. It's an American company that has taken this idea uh, and this technology from Mother Earth and brought it into some pretty cool practical applications. And long story short, the negative ions are basically reducing inflammation throughout your whole body. And inflammation is the, the cause and the core of almost every illness that we can uh, imagine and on every physical um, issue with our body all comes back to inflammation. So not only are you physically healing yourself just by taking your shoes off and putting your feet on the ground, but also that's the mental and the uh, the intellectual and the spiritual, almost the energetic side of, of this method of grounding, which also it calms you immediately. I mean, think about it, like how good does it feel just to take your feet in the bare in the sand on the beach and walk along the beach barefoot? Like, any human being can relate to that and know and say, yeah, it's very soothing. Well, it's more than just soothing, right? Like there's so much more going in. One, you're getting in a way also a form of um, not acupuncture, uh, reflexology. Reflexology. Yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> reflexology from Mother Earth. And she's great. She knows exactly where to pinpoint uh, your, uh, your, uh, your meridians and all that. But uh, again, the, it's these negative ions that you're receiving. So you're doing a really good service to your body. And actually, it's like a physical act of self-love to put yourself in uh, to some form of nature, even for three to five minutes and just reset the system, rejuvenate the system, and then go back to whatever it is you're going to do. Or you can use it as an opportunity to um, ask those questions. What do I need right now? Maybe the answer will be a little bit more clear if I go to the park or just go to my backyard, whatever I can get some form of nature plug in my feet on the ground and then maybe the answer can come a little easier yeah that's amazing um i i feel that we can learn so much from mother earth and we don't often take the time to ask her what can she give us she's always giving us but i think oftentimes we don't ask and um, all of our, from a Chinese medicine perspective, all of our meridians actually start in the feet. All of our organs are located in the feet, which is why reflexology is so profound. I, I kind of want to end here with one thing that I think the, the listener could maybe learn a little bit about, and I'd like to read a passage, just a couple of sentences from the, mm -hmm. um, the Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer, who was the author of Untethered Soul, which is, a, like I said, a phenomenal book. Because one of the keys to getting to this place of bliss, self-love bliss. That is a lifelong journey as well as a constant 
when we've found, when we've actually plugged ourselves in to the outlet of cosmic consciousness, right? Of infinite, infinite possibility to ask the question, what do I need to surrender? And when we can really embody and trust that life is going to work itself out always. And can, can we be open to that? Can we surrender that we don't have to figure out everything because life is always in the present and our future is going to look not by our past, but where we are in our present moment. And I love what Michael Singer wrote in part of the, the surrender experiment. He said, I can see that the practice of surrender is actually in two stages. First, you let go of the personal reaction of likes and dislikes that form inside your mind and your heart, right? So those are the expectations. And second, with the resultant sense of clarity, you simply look to see what is being asked of you by the situation unfolding in front of you. So facts. What would you be doing if you weren't being influenced by the reactions of your likes and dislikes? Following that deeper guidance will take your life in a very different direction from where your preferences would lead, would have you lead. That is the clearest I can explain my surrender experiment because it came from the foundation of both my spiritual and worldly life. There is a huge difference between expectation and preferences. We can certainly have a preference for what we would like to have in life. But when we let go of the emotional peace, we let go of the past experiences that we've had or maybe the future anxieties of the future and just be. I think life starts to unfold in such magical ways and it is not easy to surrender. But when we exercise that muscle, that muscle goes from atrophy to the biggest level of strength and resiliency we've ever seen. What do you think, Chris? Hundred thousand percent, hundred thousand percent, and it's practice, though. That's the big thing: it's practice, practice, practice. That's really what has gotten me to this moment now. Is cons- well, it wasn't always consistent, but doing my absolute best to practice and practice, and then continue to practice these 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 concepts, these ideas of surrender, trust. I mean not not easy like you said they're not and so if you are having you know a bit of a struggle with it that's okay that's actually if anything you're right you're on the right path (laughs) so don't you know don't beat yourself up as we've been also kind of harping on today right once again treat yourself with as much love and respect and compassion as you as you can while you go while, while you navigate this journey it's it's um you're really navigating it's it can it's a it's a heck of an adventure and um challenging beautiful everything else in between and uh at the end of it all if you can come back to a place of this um the self-love it will help with those aspects of surrender and trust because you have that sense of like you know what i don't know what's going to happen but i know i got my back i know i'll look out for myself and ultimately that's all i can do and ultimately if that's if there's anything that's going to help me in any situation it's going to be that anyway. So I'm kind of setting myself up for success in the best way that I can just by reading back into this I, I sense of sense of self-love, sense of oneness with myself, sense of, of looking out for me, you know. So that's beautiful. And, and you know, the audience, like, let us know what what does self-love mean to you and, and what are your practices? And 
you know, what have you found? And because we're just listing a couple of options, but there's a lot of other things, you know, um, and we didn't even get into in this episode, but I mean, things, I'll just give a couple of other examples where you can find profound uh, self-love through uh, through tantric exercises, through um, sexual exercises with yourself. And that's actually a journey I've been going on with myself and some of my other friends who are um, in this area. And, you know, there's infinite ways what you can go through meditation. You can find self-love through breath work, through um, super incredible breath work modalities. You can find self-love through um music uh music healing music therapy uh using using the arts as a, a therapeutic modality to uncover more of these elements of self-love i have a friend who's an art therapist and she gets her her patients to draw and do these drawings of what do you see like who are you what do you feel is you and draw you and they draw and all of a sudden they're like oh i didn't even know i saw myself in this way and then the art acts as the conduit for them to go on the self-love journey so Again, what we've talked about is just an example of of your own unique journey that you're going to go on and experience this self-love. And it's going to look probably quite different, but I feel like the similarities are going to be with the, what you feel within yourself. That's going to be probably where we can all connect on that level. And then let us know what your journey has been because it's unique for everyone. And we'd love to hear because it's uh, it's absolutely fascinating to hear what everyone else's journey is. Yeah, and we do appreciate everyone sending comments or um, getting in touch with us via social media. Um, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel. We'd love to hear back from you. If you can give us a couple of thumbs up, we would be super grateful. Thank you so much, Chris, for just sharing your journey with everyone, with me. It's so inspiring to hear where you are, and it's contagious when we feel amazing. It is so contagious that we can't help but want to share our happiness with others. And imagine, listener, that whatever happy moments that you've experienced, even if it has not happened for a while, I know you can go back and 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 remember some of those moments in your life. And maybe that's the way you start. You focus on the times in your life where you were happy. And what that is going to do is it's going to create a more uh, momentum for you to move forward. And you can do it. We all can do it. And it's not always easy, but it is worth the ride. And you're worth it. Listener, we're all, we are in this together. So I think we'd love to continue on this conversation. Maybe we make this a part two on our next episode. So thank you so much for being with us, Chris. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. I just want to say before we sign off, like I appreciate you and everything you've added in my life for my journey into this self-love. I really appreciate you. And also, I mean, it's the most natural testimonial ever, but all these, the courses like the self mastery program and these things that we're offering now through wisdom from the edge. I mean, that has Thank been you. an integral part of my journey. So this is um, this is beautiful. And hey, guess what? If you're watching this, you know we uh, we have the resources that you can access for that. So look us up because my God, it works. It's real for sure. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. And we thank will you on the next episode. Okay. Thank Namaste. Bye bye. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Wisdom from the Edge. It's such a pleasure to have you with us. And make sure, if you haven't already, to follow, like, and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate that. It actually helps us out quite a lot in growing this platform. And also leave us a comment if you haven't already. We'd love to hear from you, hear your thoughts about what uh, you enjoyed on this episode and things that you want to offer, maybe ideas for a, a new episode or things that you want to hear more about. Also, make sure to check out our website, wisdomfromtheedge.org. All that is in the description below. And you can learn more about what we do, what offerings we have, and of course, the courses and programs. There's lots to learn from, a lot of really cool resources to check out to enhance your everyday life. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Wisdom from the Edge.